You may have heard that we can't create or destroy fat cells, but that when we gain and lose weight, we just fill up our existing fat cells or empty them out. Well, the reality is actually a lot more interesting than that, but you can't really find that information unless you actually go and read the studies yourselves. So I did that for you, and today I will be using studies to give you the real truth about fat cells, particularly the fact that they can drastically differ between people, and how you might be inadvertently doing something that is causing you to make more fat cells. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD using scientific studies to help you reach your fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And in the first study I'll be talking about today, the researchers looked at how the number of fat cells people have vary between obese and lean people, that's their terms for the two groups, over the course of people's lifespans, and also how fat cells differ before and after major weight loss. And so why are fat cells, aka adipocytes, important? Like, why should we care about how many fat cells we have? Well, just for a very, very brief reason why you should care, fat cells actually release hunger hormones, and it's thought that the more cells you have, the more hunger hormones might actually be released. And it's also thought that if you have more fat cells, then it's easier to gain weight. So the number of fat cells we have is probably pretty important. And this paper was published in Nature, which is one of the top two journals you could possibly publish this type of research in. So well done study and solid research. And the first major thing they found is that when we're kids and adolescents, our number of fat cells steadily goes up as we grow up. Until age 20, at which point it seems like we stopped making fat cells and we just have a stable number of fat cells for the rest of our life. And so that suggests that we make all our fat cells when we're young and then we don't make any more later in life or lose any. But the crazy part of this is that the obese kids in this study actually made way more fat cells than the lean kids. And the weird part is they actually stopped making fat cells sooner than the lean kids. So it almost seems like, like if we think of the trajectories, this is the lean kids, kind of a flat slope, and then obese kids hit the top of their slope sooner, and then they leveled out. So it kind of seems like the obese kids may have hit some kind of biological cap or some kind of natural physiological point at which the body doesn't produce more fat cells after a certain point, and therefore they stop making fat cells at a younger age. And what seems to be happening here is that when kids gain weight beyond a healthy BMI, they just keep making more and more fat cells to accommodate all this fat that they're producing from overeating on food. And so they end up with way more fat cells for the rest of their life because they produced a lot more in childhood. So unfortunately, this means that in this study, the kids who were obese end up with way more fat cells for the rest of their life. And what's even crazier, I think, is that only 10% of lean kids go on to become obese adults, but three quarters of obese kids end up staying obese adults. So there's a lot of things potentially contributing to that, like a lifestyle pattern that was really set when they were young and like the kinds of foods they crave and their gut bacteria and all sorts of stuff like that. But it does seem like having more fat cells that were produced when they were a kid might be part of the reason why they end up staying obese when they're adults. And I found this stat incredibly depressing because obviously a lot of the time with kids, it's not the kid's fault that they're gaining weight because they're just being fed crap. And of course, our body is hardwired to massively overeat if we're just eating crap all the time because it's literally why the companies make the food how they do. So it's super addictive and they make really great sales because it's so good we can't stop. And then that makes kids obese and then they're stuck with that for the rest of their lives. So I'm quite passionate about this issue. But anyways, moving on, the rest of the video will be less depressing. <laughs> Don't worry. Next, the researchers looked at what happened when lean adults gained weight, sometimes even up to 25% increase in their body weight, and they found that there was no increase in the number of fat cells, as long as they were over age 20, and that it was instead just the size of the fat cells that increased when they gained weight. So just like what you'll hear in the mainstream. But what about weight loss? Can normal dieting-based weight loss or major weight loss surgery reduce the number of fat cells? And it seems like the answer is no, because in this study, they also looked at people who lost a bunch of weight and had bariatric surgery, and they found that there was no reduction in the number of fat cells even two years later. So it seems like, again, it's just that the fat cells are shrinking as long as you're an adult. So is it really the case that you just make all your fat cells when you're young, and then they just kind of sit there hanging out in your body for the rest of your life till you die? <laughs> the researchers had the same question 
and they used a very clever method to look at this. They essentially used radiocarbon dating on human fat cells, and the basis for it was the level of radioactive stuff, I'll say, because that's more clear than carbon-14, but the amount of radioactive stuff in the atmosphere and how those levels varied over the last several decades, because they really increased from nuclear tests and stuff, and so they could use that to actually see how old different human fat cells were. And what they found is that actually 10% of our fat cells do die every year, on average, but the downside is that we also make back those 10%, so we replace them all by making new fat cells. So we have a turnover rate of 10% per year, and it seems like our body just makes enough new fat cells to make sure that we always stay at the same level that was set when we were late teens or 20s. Now I'm going to talk about another study that definitely gets talked about less. And in this study, they overfed adults for eight weeks on Snickers bars and milkshakes added to a more standard diet. So high fat, high sugar, added calories. And what they found is that people actually did make new fat cells, but only in their lower body. So think like thighs. And so this study really does suggest that we actually can change the number of fat cells in our bodies, even if it's just a certain part of our body. And just as a little note for that one, another study found that it seems to be especially high fat diets that will increase fat cell number. And as a fun little aside, High fat diets are actually the number one gold standard way to fatten up rats in order to study obesity. So the rat model of obesity that researchers use to understand human obesity is actually rats that are being fed a high fat diet, which I think is pretty telling. And notice that's not a high sugar diet, it's a high fat diet. It is way more efficient because rats, a lot like humans, will just keep overeating and overeating on fat until they gain a bunch of weight. So the main research on this paints a pretty dark picture of fat cells, where we just gain a ton of fat cells when we're young and gain even more if we gain extra weight. And then when we're older, we can actually continue making more, but that's it. We can't lose any. And we can just continually expand our fat cells in our thighs pretty much if we eat a high fat diet. But because y'all probably know by now, I'm kind of like a research terrier or a mole or something that digs, because I just dig and dig and dig and find weird studies you'll never hear about elsewhere to find some hope in the sadness that gets reported by media. And I did find some fascinating and hopeful stuff, but because I want to keep each video as like a chunk of information and not have it be 40 minutes long, I'm going to have a part two with the hopeful information here about fat cells. And specifically, very specific things you might be able to do to actually reduce the number of fat cells you have in your body. And a reminder that this is important because it's thought that if you have more fat cells, it's way easier to gain weight. And in fact, the number of fat cells is often blamed for why it's so hard for people to keep weight off once they've lost it. So like why all the contestants on The Biggest Loser gain all their weight back. It's thought it could be because they have more fat cells from being obese as a kid. So if you want to know what you can do to reduce the number of fat cells in your body, Check out part two next week and hit the notification bell below to stay updated on my videos. If you like this video, please like and share and of course subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week for part two.